Hey guys, what's up? It's Eric with Advanced Level Automotive. Got this 2011 Land Rover Range Rover. This is the supercharged version. And uh, this vehicle is a no start. Customer had it towed here. Uh, and the problem that he's having, let me show you. This is a push start and I have the smart key right here. So I'm gonna put my foot on the brake pedal and I'm gonna go ahead and push the start button. The engine does not crank and we get a message here on the display that says smart key not found uh, refer to handbook so anyways the vehicle does not crank none of the accessories come on um, he did call a locksmith to have them come out and try to reprogram another key but the locksmith could not get a key to work with it or i guess he couldn't get the computer to communicate so that he could uh, program a key to it anyways they had the vehicle towed here um, I'm gonna see if I can find any information on this problem. All right, so I was scouring the internet. I really couldn't find anything on IATN or uh, anything like that. So I was just kind of Googling and uh, just going through random forums and pages. Uh, I ran into this one and I think it might have some useful information. Uh, if you look over here, uh, it tells you the model, uh, smart key not found. Uh, it's saying that the issue, the ignition will not turn on, engine will not start and message smart key not found is displayed on the instrument pack center. Uh, the cause currently engineering is has identified several concerns with regards to the message and in order to help correct the concern the following steps must be performed. Uh, it says over here I mean it's asking you if the CAN bus is operating properly uh, yes or no if uh, no proceed with diagnosing that. Uh, the next step they tell you to do is to remove to remove fuse 17 which is a 5 amp fuse from the passenger compartment fuse box. Wait one minute, it reinsert the fuse. Uh, and then it says here, has the smart key not found? Message cleared. If yes, then at this point you've diagnosed the concern with the KVM software. It's saying that engineering is currently looking into this condition and what is causing the KVM to enter this locked state. Um, so basically what they're telling you here to do is to remove the 17 amp fuse, wait one minute, reinsert the fuse, uh, check to see if the vehicle starts, and if it does, then it's most, most likely a problem with the software and engineering is working on it. So let's go ahead and try that. All right, so we're back at the vehicle. I'm on the passenger side. Went ahead and lowered the glove box. Uh, if you look over here on the side, you're gonna see that there's a, a little arm that you can just push it inward and that'll let you lower the glove box down enough to access the fuse panel and there is a cover on it you look you're gonna see a cover back there with two clips you just pop this cover off and on the cover it's got the layout for the fuses uh, but Land Rover was kind enough to actually number the fuses and if you look right here we're gonna see uh, number 17 fuse which is this 5 amp fuse right here I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out with a pair of pliers go ahead and do that here pull it out and now we're gonna wait a minute all right so it's been a minute now well, it's actually been a couple minutes I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall the fuse now let's go ahead and try to restart this thing all right so here's the moment of truth I'm gonna go ahead and try to start it and we're still getting the message All right, so what I'm gonna try to do now is I'm gonna try to disconnect the battery and see if we can reset it that way. Okay, so I located the battery. I already went ahead and disconnected it. And uh, what I'm doing is a capacitative discharge just using a jumper wire. I went ahead and uh, clipped the two uh, battery terminals together. So if you see, I've got my jumper wire clipped here and the other end of that jumper wire clicked here. And the battery is disconnected at both of the terminals here. So we're gonna wait a minute and then we're gonna see if this works. All right, so I went ahead and reconnected the battery and removed my jumper wire. I'm gonna go ahead and try to start the vehicle. So here we go. Smart key not found, refer to handbook. So we're still having the problem here. 
six and a half hours later. All right, guys, things went from zero to 100 real quick. So uh, I decided to call the customer to ask him a few questions. And uh, he mentioned something to me that I found really interesting. He said uh, that every time he would wash the vehicle, the radio would stop working or the, the navigation head unit would cut off. And I thought that was really interesting because, you know, I have, what, what does washing the vehicle have anything to do with uh, the radio cutting out or having electrical issues? But I kept that in the back of my mind. Let me just cut to the point here. I'm going to tell you what's, what's going on and how I figured it out. So the problem we were having was that the KVM module would stop communicating intermittently and also like the audio head unit would stop communicating uh, and a lot of a lot of the modules on the vehicle would stop communicating intermittently um, and so what I did was I hooked up my lab scope and with the lab scope I was able to uh, probe pin 6 and pin 14 on the DLC connector which are the pins for the can high and can low so anyways with the waveform looking like that I knew that there had to be a module a bad module on the vehicle more than likely so what I like to do in this case is unplug each module uh, individually uh, one at a time and then I watch to see if the waveform changes and let me show you where the problem was we're gonna go to the back of the vehicle here so in the back of the vehicle the luggage compartment there's a cover here if you remove this cover <clears throat> it gives you access to a lot of the modules uh, this is the KVM I, I took it out of its uh, box uh, just to inspect the uh, the board but everything there looks good. Let me show you where the problem is. On this particular vehicle, this parking aid module, you'll see it right here, it's got three connectors. Uh, so I already got it disconnected. Anyways, when I disconnected this thing, uh, first of all, the waveform went back to normal and I got communication and I was able to start the vehicle right away. Uh, second thing I noticed is if you look, there's a lot of corrosion in those connectors. If you can see, lots of green corrosion and I've already got this unbolted but let me show you the inside of this thing as you can see there's a lot of corrosion in there and this thing was still full of water uh, so when I took it out I flipped it over and a bunch of water came out of it so the problem with this vehicle is that this rear quarter glass must be leaking somewhere something up here is leaking I'm not 100% exactly sure what it is it's leaking uh, but every time it rains or they wash the vehicle, uh, they're getting water down into this area here and it's making its way through the connector into this parking aid module. And this parking aid module is causing a bunch of problems throughout the CAN bus network system. And uh, yeah, there you have it. All right guys, so with the parking aid module disconnected, we now have communication and I can now start the vehicle. There we go, works. So this is definitely going to need a new parking aid module, but before we replace it, uh, this customer is going to need to get this water leak fixed. That's not really my area of expertise, so I'm sending him to a nearby shop where they can figure out how that water is getting in to that rear compartment and hopefully they can fix that for him. Alright guys, thank you for watching the video. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. If you enjoyed the video or found it useful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, you can always comment down below. And I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks.